Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be covering another bow. And what does Diablo 2 have in excess? Well, it has a lot of bows. A lot of crossbows. And more crossbows. Not only does it have crossbows and bows, it also has class specific bows. And, uh, and when you count them all out, it's a pretty large number. So there will be a lot of bow videos. Uh, this one in particular was requested. Um, it is Blood Raven's Charge Matriarchal Bow. And uh, the interesting thing about the uh, Blood Raven's Charge, uh, right off the bat, is you can tell that for some reason the graphic is the size of a 2x3 graphic, but it still takes up the larger 2x4. It really bugs me. Like, there's some sort of OCD inside my mind that just really doesn't like the fact that it doesn't take up the right number of slots for its picture. <laughs> and I want to cry. Um, so, B Blood Raven's Charge is an interesting bow, and uh, we're going to go over it together today. Um, it does have some odd effects, which um, can make it useful for some some niche things. Um, it does have uh, better options, though. I feel like, and uh, and as we go over it, I think you'll uh, you'll find out why. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that this is a um, an elite item. I'm pretty sure. Just want to double check just to make sure. Yes, the uh, the matriarchal bow, uh, which is the uh, the elite version. So this item cannot be upgraded. So it is the damage that it is. Um, it is a 66 to 155 damage physical bow. Uh, we also have 187 dexterity requirement, which is really high, uh, an 87 strength requirement, which is not bad, and uh, level 71 requirement on the bow itself. So it's a relatively high level um, bow, and uh, because it's level 71, it's going to be judged on its sort of end game capability. Um, and this is important because um, when you judge a bow or judge an item in general, you want to judge it based on the level that it is. If it's a level 5 item, you know, you, you have rather relaxed judgment on this item because it's for a level 5 character. But when we're judging a level 71 item, we're going to be judging it based on the more of an end game statistics. So if I'm a little, I'm a little harsh on this bow, um, you know, that, keep that in mind. And we do have plus four to bow and crossbow skills on this bow. Uh, unfortunately, it does roll as low as two. So it's two to four. Um, if you find a Blood Raven's Charge Matriarchal Bow and it's only plus two, it's going to be kind of a sad bow. Um, especially since the plus four to bow and crossbow skills is one of its major benefits. Um, especially when you consider the fact that you can find a regular white matriarchal bow with plus three. So that that one extra above three is kind of like the magic number there. Um, what could plus four to bow and crossbow skills be good for? Well, it's particularly good for any character that is um, utilizing skill-based damage. So if you are a, a freezing arrow Amazon, if you are a exploding arrow Amazon, um, maybe Immolation if you're running that. I really hope they reduce the uh, delay on Immolation Arrow. Um, or perhaps you are specifically trying to beef up, I don't know, maybe like, um, I don't want to say Guided Arrow, but it seems like the only really good choice there because it does actually increase in damage uh, with each level. And um, it's not going to do you well for something like multi-shot or strafe because in general you just don't really get really good damage bonuses for the plus to skills um, like I said it's it's really a matter of skill based damage versus uh, like physical damage uh, we also have uh, fires explosive arrows or bolts now this appears on a lot of different items uh, many 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 different bows and um, and crossbows but this one in particular is level 13 so that means that when you walk outside of town um, and you just simply um, you know, use a regular arrow on your ability, um, that regular arrow will be a exploding arrow. Um, and when it hits a target, you will see the nice explosion. Um, and you have absolutely no mana cost to this. It is just basically a free ability. Um, so what does level 13 explosive arrow give you? Uh, well, level 13 explosive arrow is going to give you approximately 
about 80, about something I want to say like 70, 78 extra damage for fire. Um, so you get 78 fire damage at a little, little explosion. Um, you also get 128% bonus to your attack rating when you fire, which is pretty nice. 128% um, is a lot. Um, on top of this, Exploding Arrow has a very interesting effect, and I've gone over this before, but uh, but since we are talking about this particular item, we're going to go over it again. Um, now, Exploding Arrow will take any source of fire damage that you have and add it to the explosion. Um, and this is important because if you are running um, something like Dragon, um, or if you are running um, a bunch of fire damage equipment, if you have um, anything with fire damage on it. Um, it will add to the fire damage total. And, uh, and this is important because that is one of the major benefits of, uh, of having Exploding Arrow. And it is actually something that people use on a regular basis to beef up uh, specific characters, like for instance, enchant sorceresses and things like that. However, this particular bow, since it is a Amazon only bow, is only going to be judged on what it can do for an Amazon. Um, if you are an Exploding Arrow Amazon, you probably don't need the level 13 Exploding Arrow It's on this bow. Um, although it is kind of nice to have a free level 13 Exploding Arrow. Um, and if you are building Fire Arrow to synergize with Exploding Arrow, um, it will synergize with this ability, increasing the damage. So that's interesting. Um, and if you take a look at Exploding Arrow, uh, Exploding Arrow is uh, right here, and it says it receives 12% fire damage per level from Fire Arrow. Um, so we, what we would be looking at is a fully synergized level 13 Exploding Arrow, if you were fully synergized. Um, and why would you want to use this over your level 20 Exploding Arrow with, you know, with plus the skills? Well, the answer is, is because it's free. So you may find yourself in many situations where you are out of mana and um, being able to still fire your exploding arrow, even at a diminished capacity, um, is going to be an absolutely great boon because that means that you can uh, recover your mana using this shot. So if you were to, for instance, um, you know, be in a situation where you ran out of mana completely, you could very quickly swap to your regular attack, still gain the benefit of your explosions, although at a lesser degree, and, uh, and restore some of your mana in the process. Uh, so next on this list, we have a pretty nice amount of enhanced damage, although it does have a pretty high variable um, of 180 to 230%. Um, unfortunately, that is, uh, I believe, what, a 50% variable on the ED. And um, if you did find one of these in a poor condition, it would probably look something like this. It would probably be like 180% ED with plus two bow and crossbow skills. Um, generally, if you're going to build a character around this item, if you're going to socket it, if you're going to put something nice in there, um, you're probably going to want to find one that has plus four bow and crossbow skills and some decent enhanced damage. So keep that in mind. Um, it also has a variable on the bonus to attack rating. So not only does it have a variable on the ED, a variable on the plus bow and crossbow skills, it also has a variable on the bonus attack rating, which is, it's just kind of crazy how much variable they put on this particular item. I guess they really didn't want people using this because, you know, a lot of the times people will find this and they'll be like, oh, well, that's crap. And they're not wrong because, you know, when it rolls really low stats, it kind of is. Uh, but if you were to find this in its perfect version, which we see right now, with the plus four bow and crossbow skills, the 230% uh, enhanced damage, and the 300% um, bonus to attack rating, it's actually pretty sweet. 300% bonus is a lot of bonus. And, e and when you count in the bonus from Exploding Arrow, that's even more bonus. So we're talking about the um, the 100, was it 100 and uh, like 70%? Let me, let me go double check that real quick. Uh, so level 13, 128%. So we're talking about the 128% attack rating bonus on the exploding arrow that it gives you in combination with the 300% bonus attack rating that it has on the item. So we're looking at a total of 428% attack rating bonus. Um, now it does not show you the exploding arrow bonus because the exploding arrow is not actually on the, the, the screen here. Um, to show you that, I would have to actually click on exploding arrow and just kind of show it to you, but I actually don't even... I don't even have that skill um, on this Amazon. Um, but as you can see, uh, let me let me um, pull a bow that does not have bonus to attack rating. Uh, I know I have a bow with no bonus to attack rating on it. 
We go. Langer Brizer. That will work. There's no bonus to attack rating and there's no dexterity. All right. So if we put on Langer Brizer, of course we have to put on some, 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 some bolts. We got to put on some bolts. I'm sorry. Farah. Game. Game. So as you can see, Langer Brizer has 4,855 attack rating um, with no bonus to attack rating. And when we go over to the Blood Raven's Charge, we've got 8,365. And then we can beef that up a little bit further for when we fire the regular arrow for the exploding, uh, exploding bolts. And if we swap to something like, uh, for instance, Strafe, um, strafe, actually Strafe doesn't have an attack rating bonus, does it? No, just a damage bonus. Uh, da, 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 da. We need an attack rating bonus skill. Yeah, here we go. Cold Arrow is 127, which is very close to the 128 um, that Exploding Arrow has. So as you can see, it's 9,851 attack rating um, with the the basically the basic attack on this bow, which is, uh, which is pretty darn sweet. And, um... Drop them arrows on the ground. Bah. Um, and then we get to the uh, the real meat and potatoes of this bow. Um, nothing really on this bow has been super duper special. Um, you know, ED uh, fires explosive arrows is pretty common on most bows. Um, if if that was especially especially what you were going for, or specifically what you were going for, I feel like uh, you would probably be better off with a different bow if you were just just trying to get the fires explosive arrows or bolts. Um, the plus to skills, there are other bows out there, I think, that have just as much plus to skills. Um, right off the top of my head, um, I believe Lycander's Aim has pretty darn good plus to skills. Uh, yes, it's running a plus two bow and crossbow, and then also plus two Amazon, which is actually superior to Blood Raven's Charge for that specific purpose. Uh, because it's not only is it giving you two to bow and crossbow, it's also giving you two to all, which can help out your Valkyrie, your decoy, your slow missile, your infravision, uh, I say infravision, um, <laughs> inner sight. I always like to call it infravision. Um you know, it, it helps out more than just simply your bow and crossbow skills, which is nice. And um, so what is it special about this particular bow? What is the special thing? Well, the special thing about this bow is that it has revive charges. Um, and I saved the best for last because, you know, why not? So in, on this particular bow, if you were to go out, um, I don't know, let's say in Frigid Highlands, uh, and you were going to start killing uh, Shanky Poo, um, you could summon yourself an army. Um, now, what good is an army on a character like this? Well, you can use them for very specific purposes. Um, the unfortunate thing about revives is they are relatively uh, short-lived, uh, which means they only last about 180 seconds. Um, but for very specific purposes, I think you will find that they are actually quite interesting to have around. Um, for instance, one thing that you can do with them is you can use them in a uh, an Uber run. So if you are fighting the Ubers, you know, like Uber uh, Duriel, uh, Uber Mephisto, Uber Bale, uh, Pandemonium Diablo, Uber Diablo, um, Lilith, and, uh, and Uber Iswal, uh, maybe you would like to get yourself a little bit of uh, extra damage, a little bit of safety. Um, and one of the things that you can do is you can get yourself... Um, the crushers. So these guys right here, the the Erdars, um, actually have crushing blow uh, on their attack. So if you were to go down here, um, kill quite a few of these Erdars in advance, you definitely don't want to waste the revives. So what your what your goal here is is your goal is to kill as many of them as possible before you revive them, and then. Once you have you know, your portal up, once you're, uh, you've found Lilith, or you've found Duriel, or you've found the um, Uber Iswal, or you know, you're ready to go into Uber Tristram, um, you would summon forth your, your Erdar army. Um, and trust me when I say that, uh, that a army full of Erdars is actually extremely powerful. Now you are limited to uh, five monsters here, but uh, if we were to go to Frigid Highlands, for instance... And uh, take these Erdars with me um, into the into the darkness. Um, they will they will crush uh, and and literally because they have crushing blow, 
and they are very, very effective at uh, at fighting things like uh, like elites. Um, they will sit here and they will just absolutely pound on things like Shank, and uh, and if you utilize this with something like a teleport item, um, which is uh, which is very important if you're trying to specifically target your Erdars on something. Um, you will notice that it is extremely effective. Like, for instance, I can target my Erdars on top of this catapult, um, or I could target my Erdars on onto this little guy right here and get him murdered in about, like, two seconds. Um, and this is a way that you can focus all of that damage on one particular target, and it works really surprisingly well. Um, is Blood Raven's Charge Matriarchal Bow better than... You know, like any of the other bows out there that you could choose, not particularly. Um, I feel like Lycander's aim is probably superior to the Blood Raven's charge. Um, there is also probably a couple other bows which I would consider to be superior, uh, maybe even the Faith Bow, um, as well as uh, Wind Force. Um, and it really depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, the plus four to skills is definitely very nice if you're a uh, Freezing Arrow Amazon, if you're a um, an Exploding Arrow Amazon. The free Exploding Arrow is certainly nice, and it can be utilized quite well if you happen to be um, set up for that. And... Um, if you can get uh, a, uh, a sorceress to enchant you with a really nice enchant, the enchant fire damage will also transfer to the exploding arrow, which is certainly nice. Uh, but it seems like the real main reason why you would use this bow in particular is the revive charges. Um, it's really the only special thing that this bow has over something else. And um, unfortunately, you can't beef it up, so you are stuck with the, uh, the static five monsters. Um, and you would also have to uh, repair this or recharge it. Um, so there's two ways you can do this. You could repair it. And as you can see, it's at 109,969 for, uh, what did I use? Uh, 15 charges. So you're probably looking at something like 218,000 gold to repair the entire thing. Um, or you can use a, uh, I believe it's a Ral rune or a Soul rune, one or the other. You know what? Let me look it up for that. For the sake of the video, Herodric Cube Recipes. There's so many good Herodric Cube Recipes. I have a uh, I have like a whole video on Herodric Cube Recipes, by the way. And um, basically, what this is is you take the uh, item, for instance, that would need to be recharged. Um, you would put it in the Herodric Cube, and uh, you would put it in the Herodric Cube with the correct items so uh to repair to repair an item and recharge it um you need a chippy you need a little chippy jam um and, uh, and this is important um and so for a weapon it is a ort rune and then you would also put a chipped gem in there and you would hit repair and it would repair and recharge it um, for a uh, armor it's a ral rune and a chip gem and it would repair and recharge it um, however if you just want to repair it and you don't want to recharge it, um, an Ort rune repairs weapons and Ral runes repair armor. And keep this in mind because if you're running something like a superior Enigma in like an Archon plate, the repair cost can be quite ridiculous. And uh, Ral runes are kind of easy to come by. Um, in fact, you get you basically um, you know uh, <laughs> you get given one for free for the quest in Act Five from all difficulty settings, uh, Ral or Tal. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll come across tons and tons of RALs, and uh, it's definitely worth using RALs to repair your equipment when it's super-duper expensive. Um, now, the charges on this particular bow do make it a little bit... Um, what's the term I'm looking for? Kind of just, just not really the greatest um, as far as using them on a, a regular basis. Um, charges generally don't get used like regular skills. You know, if I was a necromancer, I might keep an entire revive army up. And I might try and keep this revive army, um, you know, constantly on, you know, at, at all times. And I might be constantly reviving it to, to keep the army at maximum. Well, a, an Amazon with this bow can't do that. Um, an Amazon with this bow has 30 charges. And, uh, that roughly means with a, um, maximum of five per cast, so you can only have five revives, you're talking about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's six 
full armies that you can make before you need to do a entire repair, um, which is not enough for a game. Um, if we were to multiply that out in time, um, since you're talking about the duration of the army itself, we're talking about 180 seconds times 6 divided by 60. So we're looking at about 18 minutes worth of revives if you were to use this um, on a full-time basis, just constantly keeping your army up, making sure that you had revives at all times. Um, 18 minutes is not bad, but 218,000 gold to repair the bow is kind of bad. Um, it really depends on what you want to do. You could just uh, you could just use it for role play. Um, you know, you could you could really just uh, pretend to be Blood Raven herself. You know, and just uh, just walk around with an army of the undead. It's just kind of fun. Um, there is some other things that we need to talk about with this bow. Um, sockets. What can you put in this for sockets? Um, I feel like with this bow, um, speed is is. Uh, a really nice thing with this. It's already very fast on the Amazon, but making it even faster certainly wouldn't be bad, especially since it seems to be focused around a elemental damage character. Uh, keep in mind that elemental damage tends to be better the faster you are, because whether you're doing a thousand elemental damage and you're attacking slow, or a thousand elemental damage and you're attacking fast, you're still doing one thousand elemental damage. So the faster you attack, the more you can apply that elemental damage. Um, so putting in a shale or something like that so you can hit the fastest breakpoint uh, might not necessarily be a bad idea here. Uh, you can also put a 15% um, IAS uh, jewel with uh, with some other nice effects on it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go for ED just simply because I feel like this bow is really kind of revolving around an elemental damage zone. Um, you could also stack fire charms and fire equipment with this bow uh, or dragon armor, things like that, to enhance the explosive arrow if you would like to. Um, I mean, it does give you a free explosive arrow, which is kind of nice, and uh, you can beef that up as you need to. Um, you can also... I think I've gone just about as far as I need to with this particular bow. Um, the only thing left is to talk about where to find it. And um, let's do a quick search with this real quick. So we're going to look up treasure class, uh, D2. And uh, we're going to see where this uh, treasure class falls for the Blood Ravens charge. So Blood Ravens charge is a uh, TC class 54, but it is a Q level 79, which means it's not going to drop from very low level zones. Uh, we're probably talking about... Um, Treasure class 81, which is relatively high. And uh, that means it's probably not going to drop from just about anywhere low level. It's going to be hell difficulty. Um, I believe cow level should be able to drop it um, because cow level is level 81. Um, there's a lot of zones in hell difficulty which are high enough to drop this, but there's also a lot of zones in hell difficulty that are not. It's going to be hit or miss all over. Um, let's take a look at Silo's pen real quick just to... Uh, to get an idea of where we might see this particular bow drop more often. So let's go to uh, bosses um, and let's take a look at Blood Raven's Charge. And let's see which particular boss has the highest percent chance. So according to this, Hell Mephisto has the highest probability of dropping this bow. Uh, Hell Diablo also has a pretty good probability. We're looking at uh, one, one, in one, one in 1,996 for Mephisto, one in 2,072 for Diablo. And Bale also has a pretty good chance at one in 20, uh, 2,102. Um, it's interesting. Um, and of course, even uh, Mephisto on the non-quest... Um, has a 1 in 3,010, so not bad at all. Uh, it seems like uh, if you're looking at non-quest kills, um, Mephisto in Hell has the best chance. Um, basically, Quest Bale, Quest Diablo, and Quest Mephisto have a really high chance to drop it because they have enhanced drop rates. But, um, I mean, it really looks like Hell Bale, Hell Diablo, and Hell Mephisto are really your best bets there. And uh, let's look at uh, Super Uniques real quick, just to uh, really be thorough here. And uh, it looks like the Cow King in Hell Difficulty has a really good chance of dropping the bow. So not bad. Uh, Neilothak, Neilothak can drop the bow, but it's a pretty crappy chance. 
Right, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when I prattle on for 25 minutes about uh, a bow, which you probably will never use. <laughs> and as always, keep watching.